Hi there, how are you doing? It's 12 o'clock, but it's dark already. Okay, that's a bit better. So what I'm gonna be doing in this video is modifying an old camera of mine. And this right here is the camera I'm gonna be modifying. So this is a Casio Exilim EXFH20. I've had it since like 2007 or 2008, and I use it quite a lot. That was up until the SD card slot stopped working. There's pins inside the SD card slot, and uh, they somehow got bent, and they are inside there. I don't think you can see them, but uh, they're all wavy and stuff, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to sort that out too. But what I'm gonna be doing with this is taking out the IR cut filter. And what that does is it stops infrared light getting to your sensor and makes your pictures look normal. So I'm gonna remove that because it's an old camera and I just wanna try this as a bit of an experiment. And then afterwards, hopefully, if I'm successful, we'll probably see what the pictures look like. Also, I've taken some slightly strange pictures recently. I might touch on that in a video on my other channel. I might. Anyway, in one of my previous videos, what I did was I used one of these screwdrivers and it fell to bits. So what I've recently got to help me undo small screws is this. And this is actually pretty decent. So if you need a small precision screwdriver kit, then I suggest getting something like this. This, however, is just a box, so we don't need this. Inside the box, however, comes this. And the cover for this is held on with magnets. So when you take that off, it just pops off like that. And you can see what we have. So we have a pack of sweets. I don't suggest eating these because they don't taste very nice. Maybe just leave them in there, but I'll take them out for now. So we've got this, which is the main part of the screwdriver. And then obviously we've got the bits. Also there's this, which is bendy and can come in quite handy for stuff, but we're not gonna need that. I'm just gonna need maybe this and maybe one of these, but we'll leave that in there for now. So yeah, back when I got this, this was one of the only consumer cameras that really did slow motion. And uh, it cost about 300 quid. Uh, quid is the equivalent to when an American says bucks. So like, you know, 300 bucks. So quid, pounds, 300 pounds. And uh, yeah, it did a fairly good job. Uh, in fact, it did a pretty good job because there was nothing else out there that did similar. These days, however, you can do slow motion with your phone camera. Anyway, time to open this up. So I did try opening this up one time in the past. I only took out a few of the screws, but because I was using screwdrivers like these, it was really difficult to do so, and I didn't have a pair of pliers. When you use a screwdriver like this and you can't undo the screw, what I do is I put a bit of pressure on the top and then get a pair of pliers and twist it from here. But back then I didn't have all the tools and it was really difficult to do so. So I kind of put the screws back in and left it. But now I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna open this up. And the reason I was gonna open it up in the past was because I dropped the camera onto its lens and it got stuck. I kind of resolved that issue using something that I stuck to the lens and I basically just pulled it back out and it was fine. But yeah, I tried it out recently and it works fine. So what I need to do is just sort out the memory card slot and uh, then it should be pretty much good to go. So I've always wondered what an infrared camera would be like and uh, doing this is probably gonna be the closest I'll get to it because I don't think I'll buy an infrared camera because I don't really have the need for it. This is just an old camera I haven't used in years so I don't really mind doing it to this. I mean, as you can see, it's scuffed up and there's marks everywhere and even the screen's got scratches on it. So what I'm doing is I'm taking off these screws and I'm gonna use this bit of blue tack. And what I'll do is put the screws onto there like that so I don't lose them. Also, if I leave the room for whatever reason, if Pancake jumps onto the desk, she won't be able to put these in her mouth and run off with them. So I've just put the blue tack just over there off the screen and I've got another piece of blue tack for the screws on the inside of the camera. And if there's any more screws, I will use another piece of blue tack. So uh, yeah, this is the first time I'm actually opening this and I'm quite excited because I haven't done any electronics work in quite some time. I mean, besides arsing around with speakers and stuff. Okay, so I think we're nearly done with all the screws. I think there might be a screw inside this, uh, no, this one. Yes, I think there's a screw inside here as well, yes. Also, back when I got this, my brother was getting into photography and he had a Canon 5D Mark II. But me, I was just posting stuff to YouTube and this actually has a YouTube function on it and uh, it's also quite difficult to open. Now if there's ribbons in this I don't want to pull it too hard because I, I might tear the ribbons and that would not be good. So I've got to be careful and there we have it. I think it's open and yes it is. Also this is flapping away. 
Okay, so there we have the inside of it, and wow. Now I've got to undo these ribbons. Okay, so I don't really like working with electronics that are this uh, delicate, because I just don't like doing that. I mean, it's not like I can't. I have done in the past, and I shall do now. Okay, that shouldn't be too difficult, I don't think. But sometimes I do think. Right now I'm not, though, because I've only had three hours of sleep. And let's undo this one first. Eureka soul. And that should be... that's that out. And this, I think you pull it up. Yes. That's that out. And then this one... Eureka soul. Okay, so that's that detached. Now, we have more screws. Do I really want to continue? Yes, I do. The only thing you should remember is the 5th of November. No, uh, the layout of the screws, which I am not going to do. I'm just going to stick them into the blue tack. This is actually electric as well, so check this out. So put it into position and then press the button and... See that? That was pretty quick, wasn't it? Shall we do it on this one as well? Okay. Beautiful. And uh, we've got another one here. There's this one here too. And this one. Also, by the way, if you have a YouTube channel on which you post videos that might be of interest to me, not gaming videos, let me know and I might even promote your channel. And uh, we have this screw right here. Okay, so that screw I just took out is going to go onto this piece of blue tack right there. Because it looks as though that screw is part of another layer of screws underneath this metal plate. So I'm sort of basically placing these screws as though they're in layers. And this should just come off. Should it? I think it should. Okay, that's interesting. Now we've got to undo more of these ribbons. So that's that one off. With this one... Now we've got this one. And this one. Ah, oh, you know what? I've just realised I've also got to do some desoldering. Desoldering! So that means I've got to pull out the soldering iron I received from Gearbest. And here we have the soldering iron that I got from Gearbest. Does the job. It also came with a bunch of other stuff, including these tweezers. Now, if your memory is really bad and you think you might forget the order in which these wires were placed, then I suggest you take a picture of what you're doing before you do it. Otherwise, good luck figuring that out. So when people usually do what I'm about to do and they remove the IR cut filter, what they replace it with is something called a Congo Blue lighting filter. And I think that might make some of the colours look a little more sort of maybe normal. I'm not really sure to be honest, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. Okay, that's that out of the way with. For now, obviously. Also, I could have been listening to some tunes while I was doing this and probably done a voiceover afterwards, but I thought I would do it all in one go and get it all out of the way with. And there we go, that's this out. Now, how many screws do we have left? Not really sure. It looks as though we can remove this as well. Okay, so there's a sticky thing holding these wires down. Okay, so that should just lift off now, I think. And... And we have lift off. Okay, so kind of regretting opening this now. Um, I'm guessing it will be... What? Oh, that might be the stabilization thingy, whatever it is. All right, so more screws. Whoops. I thought the magnet would be a little stronger on this. Let's maybe just increase its strength a little bit. So right here we have a magnet. Do this a little bit. And that should be good enough. Another way you can do that is by wrapping wire around this and giving it a bit of current. Okay, so let's see how well this works then. Screw. And... Yes. Okay, back to this then. This should just come off. Yes. No. More ribbons. Up that comes and... That's off. Now what do I do? Looks like I'm going to have to take that spring off. Let's maybe try to use my big old fingers. That works really well. My fingers work well, which is good. 
because otherwise I would have trouble picking my nose or my underwear out of my bum. Um, <clears throat> sorry about that. And we have more screws. Tiny screws. Ah, actually it looks as though I don't need to do these ones. Let's try these ones instead. And this one, this one. And it looked as though it was coming up already. Interesting. Oh, okay. Ah. And here we have the camera sensor and infrared cut filter, which is just placed on top of it. And I tried to remove this with the tweezers already and caused a bit of a chip or something or other on the side of it. So I'm just going to take that off and uh, replace everything and uh, basically work in reverse. And then we'll see if this works. And there we go. That is the camera sensor without the cut filter placed on top of it. Looks kind of funky, doesn't it? No, not really. OK, never mind. OK, so that's going to go back on top of there like that. And now I'm just going to screw everything back in. So yeah, I would try this on one of my other cameras, but because I don't use this one uh, or haven't used it in years, I thought I might as well. I mean, I didn't think it was working to begin with. So yeah, this hasn't even really taken that long and shops usually charge up to about 200 quid to um, do this. Okay, so I thought I'd save you the hassle of watching me solder the wires back on. So what I will have to do is probably get an infrared filter, which will then only let in infrared light. Okay, and that goes together like this. And now I'll put the screws in and we'll give it a test. Okay, so take note of this speaker right here. I'm pointing this camera at that for a reason. And here we have the camera that I've just modified. And what I'll do is I'll point it there and I'll take a picture and you will see this picture on the screen right now. So there you go. That right there is reflecting infrared. Also, this right here is the back of my chair. And I will take a picture of this with the camera. Or maybe I can just show you it through the camera screen. And there we have Pancake. Looking at me kind of weird. You alright, Pancake? She doesn't look very different. Oh, she's leaving. Oh, no. Okay, never mind. But the best thing, however, is this. Now, you can't quite see it, but that's a remote control in my hand. And I'm shining it at the lens. And you can just about see it on this camera. I'm also shining it at the seat Pancake was sat on. And now we have this camera. And you can see it shining off of the seat and the wall. And when I shine it at the camera, it's crazy bright. So yeah, that is the infrared camera modification. Try it out if you like. I might just put up a few more pictures here that I've taken. But for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.